Every year, flu-related illnesses cause three to five million cases of severe illness, up to half a million deaths, and they affect up to 10% of adults and 30% of children worldwide. Vaccinating against influenza is one of the most successful and cost-effective health interventions there is, and yet take-up still isn't as high as it needs to be. To discuss this, I'm joined today by Russell Basser, Senior Vice President of Research and Development at the global flu vaccine provider, Securus. I'm Emma Howard. Welcome to the Business Debate. Russell, welcome to the London Stock Exchange. Now, Securus is relatively new to the market, isn't it? And yet you've got a pedigree, the company has a pedigree, going right back to 1918 to the Spanish flu pandemic. Tell me about that. Yes, so Emma, Securus was formed last year when CSL, the parent company, acquired the influenza vaccine franchise from uh, Novartis. And we formed this new company focused purely on influenza vaccine. But we formed ourselves in 1916, it's our centenary, and started making an anti-flu product for the 1918 pandemic. We've subsequently started making the seasonal vaccine in 1942, during the Second World War, when the technology just emerged. And then we've been involved in helping Australia and other countries in the next pandemics, 57, 68 and 2009 pandemics. And we've been making seasonal vaccine glo for global markets um, since the early 2000s. It's an amazing, amazing history, but more recently, if we bring it right up to date, you've got two FDA approvals. Now, how much of a leap forward is that for Securus? Look, it's been very important for us. So these were products that were coming through in development from the Novartis vaccine group. The flu vaccine has been around for 75 years. It's traditionally been based on growing up the virus in hen's eggs to help it proliferate and then extracting it and processing it. One of the flu vaccines we've, we've had um, approved is something called flu cell vax, uh, which is a, a cell culture approach, which is, doesn't require eggs at all. So it's an escape from the attachment to eggs um, that we've had for, in the industry for 75 years. So that's very important. Um, and it's the first four strain uh, cell culture vaccine that's available. So that's the first one. Um, the other one that's uh, very important is something called Fluad, which is an adjuvanted influenza vaccine. And an adjuvant is a, another component, it's called M59 in our case, which stimulates the immune system and helps a person who receives that particular sort of flu vaccine respond with a more, hopefully a more vigorous, in a more vigorous way. So it's been approved for people who are a bit older, like 65 and above. And the reason it's targeted at that group is because as we get older, Emma, yes. we, our immune systems aren't quite as strong as they were when we were younger and people become more susceptible. So you need to treat it in a different way. So, so it's, it's trying to help people respond more robustly. So what are the barriers then to actually, you know, the countries bringing out um, vaccinations against flu and actually implementing them? Look, the flu vaccine, there's, edu there's sort of at the public level, at the personal level, people don't quite understand what flu is necessarily. They think it's a bit of a cold. And so they don't think it's as serious as it is. Yeah, they, they, they think it's the cold is flu. In fact, f you know when you've got flu. Flu hits you like a, a train. It, you get a high fever, you get headaches. Pretty it much hurts every part of your body. It hurts it? every part of your body. Pretty much laid out for a couple of weeks. Whereas a cold you get for two or three days. There are uh, sort of more public sort of problems and challenges such that you need a really... If we're talking about global flu, global rollout of vaccine, you, you need a quite a well-developed public health system where the flu vaccines are very available. So you need that infrastructure in order to, to, to deliver to get it out. out. So if you're in developed countries, it, it's not quite as easy to get out. And some, but also having manufacturing on the ground, it, it helps. So, and there's only 11 countries in the world where flu vaccines made. So that's a bit of a barrier. I, I would say one thing though, that it's, it's, a, it's a very cheap vaccine. In fact, it's about the cost of two, a, a cup or two cups of coffee for a vaccine. So I don't think price itself is a barrier. I think it's more the logistics and, and the education and, and the infrastructure that. And would that barriers. be a big argument of yours then that, that the cost involved, you would say, of not vaccinating ends up being much bigger than the cost of vaccinating? Oh, absolutely. It's a very cost effective intervention. Um, I mean, one estimate in the US, for instance, gives the cost of influenza hospitalizations. 
uh, time off work, you know, family having to care for you at about $17 billion per year. Now, one thing that fascinated me is that you actually have to change the formula each year, isn't it? That this is a vaccine that has to be constantly worked on. Yeah, so, well, the vaccine itself, the way we make it is established and that's approved. Flu has many different strains of the virus and we have four strains in the current uh, flu vaccine and these circulate around animals and around people. Now, the, the flu vaccine, that, as it infects people, mutates quite a lot. Now, generally, the mutation is very small and that's what's called a drift. And so every year, the World Health Organization has a surveillance network and it, it, it monitors the flu vaccine that's circulating in people and trying to pick up how it's drifting. And so twice a year, once for the Northern Hemisphere and once for the Southern Hemisphere, which can be different, the experts in the WHO nominate the strains to go in the vaccine. So those strains, um, they, they're the ones we have to sort of put into our vaccines as the manufacturers, and then the race is on to get them to the public in time for the season. And so the WHO wants to leave this as late as possible to give the flu vac the flus out there as little chance as possible of changing in the meantime. Now, when you have a pandemic now, you have to move pretty quickly, don't you? I know they don't happen that often, but when they happen, they can be catastrophic, can't they? Yes, the pandemic occurs when the virus really changes completely rather than just a little bit. So it's, we call it a shift rather than a drift. And it has the potential, because it's a brand new virus, to cause catastrophic illness in the community. It can shut down society because, you know, at its most extreme, like the Spanish flu, uh, I mean, 40 million people died during that pandemic. It doesn't always have to be that severe, but it can affect people very badly. So in, like in the 2009 swine flu, pregnant women and young adults were characteristically affected much more than they normally would. So the major point is that we need to have a seasonal flu vaccine capability to be ready for the time when the pandemic occurs. And you are ready for that? We're absolutely very ready. Russell, thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. And join us next time when we'll be discussing the latest innovations in digital transformation. But for now, thanks for joining us. Thank you.